Nick Vieri is a bike mechanic with over 20 years of experience, and like a lot of bike mechanics, he has some quite strong views when it comes to bikes. So we thought it would be fun to find out what his 10 least favorite bikes are. Now these are his personal opinions and choices, so don't shout at us in the comments, but do shout at him. Cannondale Slate. Now this is, for people who don't know, it's a, it's a gravel bike Cannondale brought out. It's got a lefty fork on it, suspension on the front. In theory, I should love this bike because I love the idea of suspension on a gravel bike. But then again, just in terms of the awkwardness of having to work on it, where on that one, uh, I think they've later brought out some other stuff, but the first ones, to take the front wheel off, you have to take the brake caliper off completely. So if you want to fit in your car, and then you have to fit the brake caliper on properly again. Some of them have like a, an adapter where the brake caliper can just move out of the way. But then I'm also always worried about how strong that is and how much it works. And then working the head sets, an absolute nightmare because the lefty fork clamps from the bottom and the top of the head tube. Um, and then they did a few other proprietary stuff on Cannondale where everything says BB30, but none of them are actually BB30. So I don't like it. I'm not a fan. I mean, I should love it, but I don't. Giant Propel Room Brake. And it's the actual brakes that I hate about this bike. They did these aero brake calipers um, and they were like, they sat flush with the frame on the back and then behind the fork, not in front. So the first thing that happened at the front one was all the dirt was just spraying into it. Um, the cable routing looked terrible. It was just, it is a weird thing. And I get that they wanted to be more aero and faster, but there was no alternatives. I think a company called Furrier's brought some out later, but originally if you couldn't find the giant ones, your brakes don't work until you get new ones. Uh, I had one of my mates actually, I think went through three sets of the brakes over a three year period. And that didn't work very well. So I suppose if you want to go faster, that worked very well because you know, brakes only slow you down and they didn't slow you down. <laughs> For that matter, uh, some people did a similar thing where brakes were underneath the bottom bracket. I hate all those bikes just as much. Um, what a stupid idea. Just never ever worked well. It's supposed to be more aero, but it's just pointless. I mean, if it doesn't work, and it's hard to work on, and you can't adjust it, then stay away from them as far as possible. Specialized Rebay, specifically the one with the Future Shock. Now, Specialized Rebay should be an awesome bike. It's got really good geometry, it's really comfortable, it's ahead of its time. They had the like slight suspension built into the rear uh, seat stays. So I think they were one of the first ones to realize comfort makes you go faster. But that Future Shock, stem what a nightmare to work on you know what i mean like rather get a normal bike and stick a red shift on it or the cane creek suspension stem the future shock is like uh suspension built into the into the headset so your your stem uh attaches to it and it's got weird little angles of uh i think it's t5s or t10s it's just a weird weird system to adjust um and if anything goes wrong you need to replace the whole thing um could be such a good bike it's just that is a nightmare of awkwardness again, of just making things harder instead of easier for people to work on. Trek Madone Room Break, the older version, not the newest one I've just brought out. Um, I don't even know where to start. Let's start with Isofix Seat Post. Their seat, Google it. It's different to any other seat post out there. It's got like, it's like an L shape that slides in the bottom, but uh, on a lot of bikes, they were creaking and just an absolute nightmare for people to work. You can adjust how, much suspension they have in them. It's just, it's not needed at all for an aero bike. Uh, the second thing was BB92. That wasn't just that bike. There was a lot of tracks brought that out, which is just another bottom bracket standard nobody needed. Luckily when Shram brought out Dub, they didn't do a BB92 compatible bottom bracket. So I think that's slowly dying off. So that's a good thing that's happening. Um, and then lastly, on that specific bike, it had its own aero integrated brake calipers as well, which is an absolute nightmare to work on um, and 100% not needed. Luckily, they fixed that with a new version. Normal seat, well, more normal seat post, uh, T47 bottom bracket, and they have disc brake. So yeah, fixed again. Giant Trinity TT bike. Now, disclaimer, I'm only picking this one because I'm generalizing actually all TT bikes fall into this category. It's just, I think that for quite a while was tested as the fastest TT bike you could buy back in the rim brake area. Um, and we worked on loads of them. Uh, firstly with them is integrated TT bikes. Same problem with the brake calipers, just weird uh, propriety brakes and the one underneath the bottom bracket that's just gonna get dirty. It's always impossible to adjust, especially when people start adding bigger chain rings. Uh, that also had like 
don't quote me on this, but a hundred spare parts for the, the cockpit. So we had people coming in having DI2 fitted to it and then deciding they want to change the, the angle of their the, um, extension poles on the bars. And then that's, you have to rebuild the entire bike to fix that. So just an absolute nightmare. I know people want TT bikes because they're fast, but just be aware maintenance wise, it's going to cost you quite a bit of money. If you want to save, get the new 12 speed or Shramway's wireless group sets. And that's just going to make your life a lot easier because you can change your poles without having to rewire the entire bike um, or just do TTs on road bikes. Yeah, I mean, roadman category. That's much, much, much better. Cervelo S5 rim brake. Um, where do I start? Tire clearance. So all modern bikes now, people are running in the World Tour and average people, 28 to 32 mil tires is the average. It's been proven to be much faster than skinny tires, but that bike was still stuck on 23 mil, not even 25 mil. Uh, it's supposed to be a fast bike, but then the tire is, is just gonna make it slower, a lot slower on any of the aero aero advantages on it. Um, so if you're gonna buy a second hand bike or one of them, just be aware you're gonna struggle to find tires. We, we started at 28 going upwards in the shop, which is, yeah, wouldn't have believed three years ago. Um, I think most modern road bikes all have tire clearance up to 35 mils, what they're aiming for, which is the standard now for a race bike. I've seen ones in the past where people try to squeeze in 25 mil tires and then when the wheels flex in the rear, of the bike, uh, it's been eating into the carbon and cutting straight through the carbon, which is just not good on an expensive bike like that. Um, there's a few bikes with these problems now, but yeah, that one's probably the most notable on how far behind they were. Um, we're giving time grief at the moment because their ADH 23 can only take 28 mil tires, uh, and that's 23. Canyon Aeroad CFR, I think that's the right name, you might want to double check, but it's got the extendable bars. I mean, that's just a stupid idea from every level. Firstly, you're not going to convince me that's when we're going to creak over time. And then having the wiring, the way the hoses go into the, into the cockpit is just an absolute nightmare to work on. Um, and Canyon fixes the prices they pay you for working on it. So essentially it's just, yeah, extendable bar. All this propriety stuff they're doing, I just don't like it. It just adds extra work and... I, I know they've, the real reason they made it is to make shipping easier for themselves, you know, to post the bike to you. Uh, so don't let them fool you into thinking that is there for you to change your position. You don't one day wake up and you go from a 36 bar to a 42 or a 44. It's, if you ask any decent bike fitter, you're gonna have a set width that works right for you. Um, essentially, they're making their shipping problems your your bike fitting problems, <laughs> and my mechanic problems. <laughs> the Ribble SLR. Now, Ribble had this as the team bike for a while. I just don't like the way it looks. It's plain and simple. I mean, it might be a really fast bike. I assume they've done loads of testing in wind tunnels and things like that, but that only works really fast. And I think the smallest of bars were 33 centimeters. And I think that's gonna have a massive, massive effect on the aerodynamics and how it tests but can you actually ride 33 centimeter bars? I had no handlebar tape on, but I soon like after it got released, I saw most of the team was riding with handlebar tape fitted to it because it's just not gonna be comfortable. Also, they had like a steering block in it, so you couldn't really turn your bars all the way. Cannondale did this in the Super 6, I think recently, which is just an absolute nightmare because I know of a few people that at slow speed, uh, when they try and turn in the car park, just couldn't turn enough and then crash because of it and it's, it's just not a practical bike. It's, it's I get for maybe for the lads racing, but if you're an average bloke out there, uh, buy something more comfortable. Uh, you'll be way faster on that than you would be on this super aero 33 centimeter barred bike. Canyon Grail uh, with those silly handlebars. I'm not even sure what they're called, like the double decker thing. Um, it just looks ridiculous. You need much longer handlebar tape to tape it. If you decide you want a different length or width, it's a whole new handlebar, and I'm gonna take a guess, as cheap as Canyons are, those bars weren't cheap. I mean, I'm so glad Canyons dropped it now. It's just, I, I get that it could possibly have been more comfortable. I think they said something like seven times more compliant. Seven times more than what? I mean, it's, this is like the, the aero gains people could have. Uh, Vittorio released a tire a while back, oh, not a while back, a few years back, uh, where they said it's 40% faster. 40% faster than what? That'd mean Francis and I could win the Tour de France on those tires, and we haven't won anything <laughs> on our tires, so yeah. Um, I haven't been riding for tourists. Yeah, or the Tour de France. <laughs> and finally, my most hated, 
least favorite bike of all time is, and this is, sorry, Scott, there's nothing aimed at you, but your Scott foil, well, not your Scott foil, Francis's Scott foil, just because I've had to rebuild that damn bike about 17 times over the last year with Rota hydraulic group sets, Shimano group sets, AliExpress group sets, things we had to drill holes in. It's just, yeah, the bane of my life. Um, I hate that bike more than any bike. I'm not rebuilding it next week, like you've asked. You're really quick at building it now. Yeah, well, yeah, I can probably do it with my eyes closed. We should probably... <laughs> Those are Nick's most hated bikes. Let us know in the comments section. Have you ever bought a bike which has just been absolutely terrible? Is there anything you hate working on? Let us know and subscribe for more.